Hey guys, Jacqueline here and welcome to part 9 of how to make a 2D RPG in Unity. In this video, we're going to be creating our inventory. We're going to be setting up the UI so that we can see the items that we've added. Let's begin by setting up our UI on the screen. First, let's create a canvas. Let's go to the hierarchy, right click, UI, and then click on canvas. Let's click on our canvas and head to the inspector to set up some settings for a canvas. Let's set the order and layer to a thousand. This makes sure that our UI shows up on top of all of the other game objects in our scene. Next, we'll need to set the UI scale mode to be scale with screen size so that our UI will scale properly to any size screen. This will make some options appear just underneath the field. Set the reference resolution to 1920 on the X and 1080 on the Y. And finally, we'll set the match slider to the center point at 0.5. Now let's right click on our canvas and create an empty game object and name it inventory. With the inventory selected, right click, go to UI and add panel. Let's name the panel background. With the panel selected, let's resize it to any size that you like. This looks good to me. I'm gonna change the color of the panel so that it's fully opaque by setting the alpha value of its color to 255. I'm also going to set the color to be a light gray. Let's add an empty game object as a child to the background and name it slots. This game object is going to hold all of our inventory slots on the UI. Resize the slots game object to fit how you'd like on your background. Next, let's add a grid layout component to the slots game object. This will lay out any children of this game object in a grid. Now let's right click on the slots game object and select UI and then select image to add an image. This is going to be the parent object of our slot, so let's rename it to slot. In the inspector, I'm going to change the color of the slot to a darker gray. Now, let's add an image to the child of the slot game object. This image is going to be its icon, so let's resize it so that it's smaller than our slot image. I'm going to set mine to be about 70% of our slot size. Next, let's add a Text Mesh Pro text object so that we can show how many items are in the slot. Right click on the slot game object and select UI and then select Text Mesh Pro text. This might ask you to import the Text Mesh Pro Essentials. If it does, import them. Now, let's put this at the bottom right hand corner of the slot. I'm going to resize it to be a bit smaller and then drag it to the bottom right corner. Next, let's change the alignment to right and then change the text color to black so that it's more visible. This looks good. Now that our slot is set up, let's duplicate it a bunch of times. The slots look a little weird, so let's adjust the spacing. For mine, I'm going to set the cell size to be about 130 by 130. I'm also going to set the spacing to be 20 by 20. And finally, I'm going to add some padding to the left to center the slots a bit more in the game object. You can play with any of these values to get it to look how you'd like. I think that we should add a title to the inventory so when players open it up, they know it's the inventory. Right click on the background panel, select UI, and then select Text Mesh Pro Text. Let's move this to the top of the panel and resize it so it fits nicely. In the inspector, I'm going to set my font color to black and the vertical alignment to center. Next, I'm going to set the anchor to be top left. We're almost done setting up our inventory UI. Let's add a button so that the player can close the inventory with the mouse. Right click on the background, select UI, and then select Text Mesh Pro button. Let's adjust the size of the button to be about 60 by 60 or whatever size that you would like. Then I'm going to move it into the top right corner. I'm going to set the anchor point to top right and change the text to an uppercase X and change the font size so that is easily readable. Awesome! We now have our UI visual set up. Let's make it so that we can see the items that we've picked up. In our scripts folder, create a new folder called UI. In our new folder, let's create a C sharp script called inventory underscore UI. Open the script up by double clicking on it. Once it's open, delete the start function and inside of the update function, we're going to get the player's input for opening and closing our inventory menu. To get the player's input, we're gonna be listening for their key presses of the tab button. So we will use an if statement to see if the key has been pressed. If it has, then we'll tell the inventory to open or close. To get key presses with our if statement, we can check if input.getKeyDown for the key code tab is true. If it is, then the player pressed the button. If the tab button is pressed, we're gonna wanna toggle our inventory. So let's make a function for this. Under the update function, create a new function of type void. Let's name the function toggle inventory. Great, 
Now inside of the update function, when we're checking to see if we hit tab, we need to call the toggle inventory function. Before we can toggle our inventory panel, we're going to need a reference to it. So let's add a variable above the update function. The variable will be a public variable of type game object. Let's name it inventory panel. Let's go back to our toggle inventory function and set up the code for turning our inventory panel on and off. The first thing that we need to do is check the current state of our inventory panel. Is it on or is it off? Let's add an if statement inside of the toggle inventory. Let's check if the inventory panel dot self is false. What we're saying here is, is the inventory panel turned off? If it is turned off, then we need to turn it on. So inside the brackets, let's tell the panel to turn itself on. We can say inventory panel dot set active and say true inside of the parentheses. This is going to turn on the inventory and make it visible to the player. Now we need to check if the opposite is true. We can say inventory panel dot set active and then inside the parentheses, we can say false to turn it back off. Let's save our code and head back to Unity to test out the input. Add the script to the inventory game object on the canvas. You'll see an empty slot in the inspector for inventory panel. Drag the background panel into this slot. Hit play and press tab a few times to see that the inventory turns on or off with each press. It works. Let's set up our close button too while we're here. Click on the button and scroll down to the on click event in the inspector. Here, you can add functions to call when the button is clicked. Click the plus button to add an event. Drag the inventory game object into the empty slot in the on click event. Then click the drop down menu and select toggle inventory. Pressing the tab button and pressing the X button are going to use the same function. So let's hit play again to make sure that the close button works. It should close the inventory while it's open. Head back to your inventory UI script and scroll down to your toggle inventory function. We will need to set up the UI to show the player an accurate representation of their inventory. So each time we open the UI, we should check the inventory and make changes to the UI if needed. After you turn on the inventory panel game object, let's call a setup function. Under the toggle inventory function, we will need to create a new function of type void called setup. Now, before we can set up the UI to show our player's inventory, we're going to need access to the player's inventory. Under the inventory panel variable, let's create a new public variable of type player and call it player. We're going to be setting up our UI to mirror the player's inventory. So to do that, we're going to need to have slots just like we have in the inventory. Let's go back to Unity and create a new c -sharp script called slots UI in the UI folder. Just like how the slots handle adding items to it in the inventory, the slot UI is going to set itself up when we need to have items in our UI. Open the slot UI script. Once that is open, go to your inventory UI script and add a new list of slot UI called slots underneath the player variable. Go to the setup function. In the setup function, we're going to check if the inventory and the inventory UI have the same number of slots. If they do, then we can proceed to set up our inventory. Let's add an if statement and check if slots.count is equal to the player.inventory.slots.count. In the if statement, we can use a for loop to loop through all of the slots and set each one up. Create a for loop that loops through all of our slots. In the for loop, we should check to see if the slot on the inventory is filled. We can check this by using an if statement to check if the player.inventory.slots.type is not equal to collectible type.none. If the type is not none, then we have an item in our inventory slot. We need to set up the slot in the UI. Before we can set up the UI with an icon, image, and a quantity, we need to get this information from somewhere. Let's have the item know what its icon is and have it pass that information to the inventory when it gets picked up. Let's go to our collectible script and add a new public variable of type sprite called icon. Head back to your inventory and find your slot class. In the slot class, let's also add a new public variable of type sprite called icon. Now we need to set the icon when we add an item to our slot. So let's handle this in the add item function. This is where we encounter a small problem. We're currently passing in the collectible type to this function and we can't get the icon from the type itself. So we will need to pass the entire collectible object so that we can get the information that we need from it. Change the parameter of add item function from collectible type to collectible. Let's also give this parameter a more appropriate name. I'm going to call it item. Well, this is going to cause some errors in our code. So where it says type in the function, we will need to change it to item.type. Then we can also set the icon by saying 
this.icon equals item.icon. The changes that we made here are going to cause some errors in our add function. You'll notice that where we call the add item function now has red squiggles. This is because we're trying to pass the type into the function, but now instead of the type, it needs the actual item. So let's change the add function parameter from collectible type to collectible and rename it to be item as well. This is going to cause a lot more red squiggles. Let's fix them. Next, head over to your collectible script. You'll also see a red squiggle here. When we call the add function on the inventory, we're still passing in the type. Instead, we should change this from type to pass in the object of the class. So we can say this. Head to the slot UI script. In this script, we're going to be adding two functions one to set the slot's icon and quantity, and the other to set the slot to be empty. Before we can set anything up, we're going to need to have access to our UI image that's going to display the icon, as well as the text that's going to display the quantity. This is going to require us to add two new using tags to the top of our script. Let's add using unityengine.ui and using TM Pro. Then inside the class, we're going to create a new public variable of type image called icon image. Let's also add a public variable of type text mesh pro UGUI and call it quantity text. Now that we have everything we need to set up the slot UI, let's add a new function called set item and give it a parameter of type inventory.slot called slot. Then inside the function, let's set the icon image dot sprite equal to slot dot icon. Then let's set the icon image dot color equal to a new color, setting all of the color values to one. We're adding this line because in the set empty function, we're going to be making the icon image transparent so that the slot has no images visible when it's empty. Then let's set the quantity text to be equal to our slot.count.toString. And that's all there is to setting up the item. Now let's set up the slot when it's empty. Create a new public void called set empty. This function won't need any parameters. Inside of the function, let's set our icon image dot sprite to null. That is, no sprite. By default in Unity, when the sprite is set to null, it displays a white square. So we're going to need to set the color to be transparent so that we won't see the icon square when we have nothing in our slot. So let's change the icon image dot color to be a new color. The RBG values will be one, but we're going to set our alpha value to zero. This will make the image invisible. Then after that, we can set our quantity text to be an empty string because we don't want to display the text if we have nothing in the slot. Let's go back to the inventory UI script and finish setting up our function. Inside of the if statement, let's call the function set item on the slot UI, passing in the corresponding slot. And in the else statement, let's call the slot UI dot set empty function. Amazing work, we finished all of the code to make this work. We can now head back to Unity and set everything up to get it working. To make things easier on ourselves, let's go ahead and delete all of the slots from the hierarchy except for the first one. Let's add the slot UI script to the last slot. Drag the item icon image into the image slot in the inspector, and then drag the quantity text to the quantity box as well. Let's make a prefab of our slot so that we can easily make changes to it in the future without having to delete them all again. With that set up, we can duplicate the slots again to fill out our inventory. Now, click on the inventory game object in the inspector and lock the inspector by clicking the little lock button in the top right of the inspector. Highlight all of the slots. With all of them highlighted, drag them into the slots list in the inspector. This will add all of the slots at once to the list. Unlock the inspector. Now, select all of the collectibles in your scene and lock the inspector again. This time, navigate to your carrot seed sprite in your sprites folder and drag it into the icon slot in the inspector. Make sure to unlock the inspector when you're done. Now click on the inventory game object. We need to drag our player from the hierarchy into the player slot. Once all of that is done, we can hit play and try it out. Run into a carrot seed pack and then open your inventory. You should see a carrot seeds icon with the number one in the lower right hand corner of the slot and run into the rest of the carrot seeds in the scene. Then once you've collected them all, open your inventory again. This time the number in the right hand corner should be a larger number. In the next video, we're going to be working on removing and dropping items from our inventory back into the world. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.